Hey, welcome back to Bear's Grid. On this channel, we simplify educational tech. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Google Meets polling and the Q&A feature for your participants. So Google will be rolling out these features to Google G Suite uh, Essential Account, Business Account, Enterprise, and Enterprise for Education. So everyone should eventually get these features. Polls are a great way to quickly gauge how your audience is doing with the content that you're covering online. Now in my case, when I'm teaching students, it's sometimes very difficult to see how my online audience, my attendees are doing in terms of understanding the content that I'm teaching them. So polls allow me to be informed uh, and really tailor the way that I teach my classes by really getting formative feedback to see what I need to do next. Now, if I'm doing a lesson on geometry and students don't really get the concepts, I might not know that until I do a poll, okay? So I might, in my poll, I may ask them probing questions to see how students are getting on. If I have a more responsible, mature audience, then I could blatantly just ask them how you're getting on with this uh, and, and just get a gauge of uh, yes or no. Or if I've got a more younger audience, uh, I can ask them more direct questions uh, in the sense of getting a feel for me in terms of a formative feedback diagnostic question to see how they're getting on with the question. So how do we do this? I've set up a meeting and I've joined with two other participating devices uh, and I'm gonna show you how we can use the poll feature, okay? So once you've logged in here, this is me right here. Uh, this is uh, my, uh, some two random accounts and you can see here along the top that we have these um, three shapes, a triangle, a square and a circle. That's the activities button. Now if you click on the activities button, um, I've done a video on breakout rooms. You can see that um, in, in the other video. I'll link it in the, the cards above. Uh, let's go ahead and find out how to do polls. So if you click on this, what we can do is we can start a, a poll here. So like I said, maybe I've got a, a more mature audience and I wanna ask them about geometry. Do they understand Pythagoras? What is it about? So I can say here, um, I don't know, what is Pythagoras about? That's my question, no, I spelled Pythagoras wrong. Uh, and I can give them some options here, okay? So I can say right angle triangles, option two, circles, option three, I can keep on adding my options here. Uh, and I can say algebra tiles, or I don't know, algebra expanding, whatever. You know, I'm just making this up while I'm going along. So I just wanna see, uh, do my students understand what the content is that I've covered? Do they get the gist of it, okay? So if I launch this poll, then all my participants will get this, um, they will have to answer this poll for me, yeah? Uh, I could go ahead and save this, and I can launch, uh, I can do another poll, so create another poll here. Uh, and I'm gonna create a question here. So now I'm asking a question, um, should, we, should we do breakout rooms? Sometimes we have time, we can do discussions. Sometimes I really do prob the students. Hey guys, do you wanna do breakout rooms or do you wanna to stick together and we can do a little discussion? Uh, and really, at that point, I'll just say yes and no, okay? So yes and no. So I've got two uh, polls here. If I could go ahead and save this one as well. Uh, and so maybe when I'm doing attendance or the students are actually getting on with their task, I can create some questions and I can save them so that I've got all my polls ready. So here it is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna launch one of these polls here, yeah? So I'm gonna launch the first one here and it says, just launch, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. So this is a live poll, I know that because there's a little live button here uh, and I'm gonna wait for my participants to go ahead and answer this poll. Now where do they see it? Okay, I'm gonna show you on our iPad where the participants see it. So I'm gonna go down here. You see, it's not obvious where the poll is because there's nothing that pops up. So unfortunately, uh, the polls and the Q&As don't work on iOS and an Android device, okay? So they don't work on the mobile versions. You need to have a desktop version. Now I have connected my iPad using Safari, the web browser. So I'm not using the iOS or the iPadOS app. I'm just using the Safari browser. So here you can see, if I show you quickly, I've got the activities button here. And if I click on the activities button, um, I've got a question, there's a poll here. So if I click on that poll, here's my question. You see, I can see that there. And now I can um, answer this. So I think um, it's about circles. I'm gonna click that. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on vote. So I've voted here now on, on my iPad and I can see here as a host that um, this person 
has voted circle so clearly there's you know some misconcepts here this this student or participant or attendee doesn't know what's going on now the great thing about polls is that they're anonymous other attendees don't know uh, what you're writing in your response okay um so that's good there we can see that that's the case let's start the other uh, we launch we leave that one live and we launch another uh, poll okay so let me, i'm going to go ahead and launch this one here it says should we start breakout rooms yes or no again my participant here can see um i'm going to go ahead and say no i don't want you to launch the breakout rooms because at this moment in time i don't know what pythagoras theorem is so i'd like the teacher to go through it again as I said, your name and answer will be recorded. However, other participants don't know what you're answering, okay? So this is just going to the host. I'm gonna go ahead and vote for that. And then I get the response as a host on my host device, I'll get the response here and it says, um, you know, this student doesn't wanna start the breakout rooms. Now, what I can do is I can go ahead and show everyone the results. Now, it doesn't mean that they'll see what each participant has you know, recorded as the result, but it will give a uh, sort of, you know, this bar, it will give this bar to see how many votes are for a particular option. Okay, so if I go ahead and say, um, I want everyone to see it. Now this participant can see how many votes, how many people voted for uh, the breakout rooms and how many people said, no, they don't want to start the breakout rooms. Now that's great because again, participants, why do you do polls and why do you do Q and A's? Because it doesn't disturb the flow of the meeting and there are a lot of participants, especially I'm feeling right now, there's a lot of participants who are shy because as they're online, everyone sort of laser focuses onto their response. So if, you know, it sort of limits them in taking risk and participating because they're under the limelight, they're on the hot seat and everyone can hear and see, uh, you know, who's saying what. So it's great to do polls and to do Q and A's because they are anonymous, although, you as a host, you'll get to get a feeling and gauge how the meetings are going. No one else sort of knows who's saying what, which is brilliant, okay? And so that's what the polls and the Q&As allow you to do, yeah? Okay, so we've got the polls, we've got the polls. What we can do is we can go ahead, remember, it doesn't work on a, on a mobile device, okay? So here, I can't, there's no way in which I can um, respond to that poll. It doesn't even show up. Uh, there is a point where you've got uh, in called messages, but that's about it. On the mobile app, it doesn't work. So you're gonna have to be on a desktop or a Chromebook, or if you're on an iPad, then use uh, Safari, use the web browser, don't use the actual app. So here I'm using, on my iPad right now, I'm using um, the web browser, not the app. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end these polls. I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll, and I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll. What's gonna happen with those polls? They're now closed, so participants can no longer um, add to that, they can't add to the responses. Remember, these polls, the results will come via an email. If, if I've got a participant came from a little break, you know, they just went to the, to the toilets or something, they came back, that poll is now closed, so no one else can add to that poll. Let's go back to the activities and let's do a Q&A. So with the Q&A, other participants can ask a Q&A as well. The point of it is if I'm teaching or I'm doing my lesson uh, and a student hasn't understood a question, they can ask a Q&A and that doesn't disturb the flow of the lesson. I can carry on teaching the concepts and I can see, oh, someone's asked a question and I can go ahead and answer that question. Now what's brilliant is other participants can upvote a Q&A um, and then that will that will come you know uh, to the top it will be the priority number one so what's brilliant about that is other attendees can sort of gauge the discussion of the meeting the content of the meeting because they can upvote other people's questions and that's brilliant as well because a lot of students are shy they don't want to ask a question a lot of participants online it doesn't matter whether they're students or not maybe the parents maybe you're in a meeting okay a business meeting and someone wanted to ask a question but they're waiting hey does anyone else have that question so you can upvote um, that question so let's go ahead i'm going to go as a participant now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do a question, okay? So it says here, ask questions and learn more. Your host can let you and others ask questions for everyone to see. So if I'm the host, I'll go over here, I'll go to the Q&A and I'll do, I'll turn on the Q&A. So as a host device, as the host, okay, on my device, I'm gonna turn on Q&A. So it says, let others ask questions that everyone can see and hear your answers too. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Okay, and I've got a couple of uh, options here. I can go to um, unanswered, answered or hidden. This is like sort of my uh, search 
um, a filter. I'm gonna go all questions here. And then this is brilliant as well. The newest one or the most popular one or the oldest one. So remember before I was saying that other participants can upvote a question. And so I would set this to most popular to see are other participants gauging the discussion of my content by upvoting questions that someone else may have, okay? So let's go ahead now. Now what's happened is my um, Q and A's are turned on. So I can go here, no questions yet. I can go ahead down here and ask a question. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask a question. I've got 300 characters to ask a question. I'm gonna say something like, uh, you know, did you get Pythagoras? Did you understand Pythagoras theorem? I'm gonna post that. And now people can upvote that question as well, yeah? And the reason, the way I've put it is, did you get it, is like a question to everyone else. Now other participants can see that uh, and they can upvote it. Unfortunately, on my um, phone, on a mobile operating system, you can't see questions, okay, Q and A's or polls. So um, provided you're on a desktop, you'll see that question there. Uh, because I asked the question, I could go ahead and delete it as well. I can go ahead and delete that question. As a host, let's see what options I have. So as a host, I can mark that as hidden so no one can see it. I can mark it as answered. So once I've answered it, I can get rid of it. Uh, or I can go ahead and I can delete it. So if it's an inappropriate question and I don't think it fits the content of the lesson or whatever, I can go ahead and I can delete that. Or I can hide it and address it later on, okay? So let's say I don't have that there. Uh, and I'm teaching my content and now I go ahead and I check, hey, are there any questions? Uh, I'll go to the Q&A and I see here, there's a question here, okay? And it says oldest first, I can go to do popular, whatever the case may be, yeah? It's, there is only one question. I could go ahead and ask another question and maybe I won't upvote it this time, okay? What's the definition of, a, of an angle? I don't know what that question is. So, now, no one's upvoted that question. The question's there, but it's not upvoted. I see it over here and I say, what's the definition of angle? I think I don't need that question. It doesn't fit the content of today's lesson. I could go ahead and I can hide it, okay, or I can delete it. Now, I don't want to delete it. Maybe this, the student has a genuine question. Uh, I could go ahead and I could um, just hide that question. Okay, so no one else can see it, okay? No one else can see that question now. Okay, so how do I answer questions? It's quite simple, really. You're in a video conference, you see the question, and then you verbally answer the question. And then once you've answered it, and you can gauge, you can gauge from the rest of the students and say to them, hey, guys, um, there's a question here. Did you get Pythagoras? I'm gonna go ahead and answer that. Uh, I see that it's got you know 17 upvotes, so it seems that many of you uh, may have the same question. Uh, and then I could go ahead and explain to them however I would explain to them. Once I'm done, I will go ahead and I would uh, just mark it as answered. That means that I don't need to come back to that question. So that's Q&A uh, and that's polls. As always, consider subscribing, turn on notifications. Uh, there are plenty of more videos that I've done on simplifying educational tech. I'm gonna be pumping out a few more since I'm on term break. So I'm gonna put out a few more videos. Um, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.